Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. It is Wednesday, and we are here live in our second interview with Jonathan Swires from Monument Metals. He has agreed to join us here today, and we're going to uh, take your questions and uh, talk a little bit about precious metals and the like and kind of get things going here. And, of course, I've got to multitask because YouTube changed things. And so when this thing starts on the play side, I've got to mute it real quick, and it's freezing up on me. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping this thing will allow me to do that. I apologize. Here we go. Oops. There we go. All right. Very good. All right. Now we're good to go. All right. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, one and all. Um, and uh, we are here with Jonathan Swires again from Monument, Monument Metal. So hello, sir. How are you doing since our doing last great. Doing great. Thanks for having me back. Sure thing. It's an honor to have you back here for sure. And uh, so um, uh, guess if, real quickly for those who may have missed the first interview, do you want to kind of go through an overview of, uh, of Monument Metals, maybe a little brief history and how it started and, uh, and kind of what separates you from some of the other bullion dealers out there? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I think a lot of you saw the last one um, because we did a special uh, introductory deal for many of you uh, that watched uh, the webcast. And we had expect we did, um, I think we did some special uh, variety sovereigns at spot. Yeah. And we also did some mercury dimes at spot. Um, and we left that up all weekend. And first of all, so many people tried to do it at once that they crashed the site. Wow. That was, uh, that was good. And then uh, beyond that, uh, I think we ended up selling about five times more than I thought we would. So Man, amazing. I think a couple of people saw it, but uh, yes, if you, if you don't know us, my name is John. I am the owner uh, and founder of Monument Metals. Um, I didn't really get started in the business when I was a kid. I wasn't a collector or anything like that. Uh, you know, I went to school. Part of my degree was economics. And uh, I was thinking I would get out of school and become a broker, but uh, you know I always loved business and finance. And uh, but the problem was I graduated in 2006, and that was right when the downturn was coming, and none of those brokerages wanted to take anybody new. And I had actually worked in the summers uh, when I was going to school at a local horn shop. And I spoke to the owner there who I knew and said, look, you know, can I try this full time? And I did like it when I tried it. And uh, so when I went, uh, when I went uh, to work there about two weeks after, after uh, I started working there, they offered to make me full time. And, you know, the rest is history. I've spent uh, uh, my entire, entire professional career doing this. Uh, I've, I've done it all. I've, I've worked in a retail setting. I've done the online thing, which is mostly what we do here. I've done collections. We've done rare coins. We do bullion. You know, we've done, I've done it all. We've done it all. Um, I started Monument Metals uh, a few years ago uh, because, uh, you know, the online uh, presence of precious metals was growing. And to be honest with you, I still didn't really feel like it had been done 100% correctly really the way that i i would have liked it to be when i was buying precious metals online and, and you know what i say when i say that is you know when i got started in the business when people were shipping orders to clients they were waiting two three weeks um even with cleared payment to get material to them everyone was using registered mail it would take forever to get it to you registered mail still a good idea but in terms of speed it's not the fastest uh, and then customer service. If any of you have gone to your local coin shop and talked to some of the old timers there or uh, spoken to some of the higher ups uh, at any of these online places, you know, I really didn't feel like anyone was getting the, the customer experience that they should. Right. And it's also very difficult to speak to anyone that has any knowledge in the business beyond, you know, what's the price of a gold eagle today? Right. Uh, so that's something we, we try and bring to uh, the equation. Um, I try and spend a few hours a day on the phone or doing chats with clients, even though I'm the owner. I trust me, I have plenty of other things to do, but uh, it's it's part of uh, part of the mantra of the business is to you know maintain a, 
a good uh, relationship with the community. You know, we're active on Reddit. We're active in a lot of different places, and and I'm the one that does that. So people That's call great. and ask for me. I'm available. Uh, and so are some of the other higher ups here. So that's very important to us. And we try and hope, hope that that shows through in everything we do. Very good. Well, guys, yeah, we're going to, uh, yeah, the, the rules are tonight. Yeah. As last time we ask, obviously everybody be respectful. Most people are, so that's good. Um, and we're going to take questions from you guys and I'll tell you what to type before the questions so I can see it. Um, but, uh, but that, that's wonderful. And b before we move ahead to take the, the cause mostly this is going to be questions from the viewers. But I just have one, and, and, and I wasn't going to have any except for you mentioned something about you know how shipping, and how you talked about registered mail. I've been I've posted a couple of videos of some pretty scary situations with regards to shipping, uh, metals getting lost in the mail and the like, and some people who didn't uh, buy insurance or who bought insurance and it wasn't registered mail, and and uh, I think the consensus is, was is that everything was. Um, uh, you know, your safest bet is registered mail and, and insured and the like, but what are your thoughts and what are your policies if something gets lost in the mail or what have you? Well, well, you know, that, that's a great question. And I think that affects everybody in the business. Um, you know, lost shipments do happen. They happen to us. They happen to Appmax. They happen to JM. They have, happen right. to everybody. Right. Um, a couple of things I would say. First of all, the loss rate on shipments is incredibly low. Right. Incredibly low. Like, you know, 99.999 at a, at a nine, I mean, four nines, fine. Right. Uh, 99 is <laughs> that, yeah, almost never happens. We get maybe one or two a year that are truly lost. Um, it's funny, actually, we had a client, I had a client that bought our 10 silver rounds at spot intro offer. Right. Um, back in December. And we shipped it to them on time. Everything was fine. And for whatever reason, it wasn't delivered to them. Uh, they got in touch with us. We said, look, no problem. Just uh, let us talk to our you know, post office and see what they say. Post office really didn't have anything to say. So we said, no problem. We'll ship you out replacements. Uh, so they had that in you know, maybe a week later in December. Um, I got a call from that client last week. The an initial package that had initially been lost was delivered to their house last week. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So a lot of times it's not really lost. It's right. just, it's just you know, somewhere, stuck, stuck somewhere in the in the US, like dungeon somewhere, wherever they, they put that stuff. But um, anyway, more to your question. Uh, as an individual, so for instance, if you're if you the listener are shipping to another listener or you're shipping to a company like us, um, always, 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 always. The only the only service I would recommend doing is registered mail through the post office. There's a few reasons for that. So first, you can insure it directly with the post office because you know one perk of a business like us is we have private insurance, but not everybody can get that for all the different types of uh, shipment methods. But registered, you can. Um, second. You know, I said that the success rate of shipping was 99.99. This is as close to 100% as you can possibly get. I've done this for a long time. I've only heard of one legitimately lost registered mail package. Right. And the postal employee involved with that was fired. Um, the downside with registered mail is that it takes longer. If you take a look at tracking on a registered mail package, it tracks like it's a priority package. So it'll say like it's a two to three day service, but it's really not. It'll take probably somewhere around a week, maybe a little bit more, seven to 10 days to get there. Right. Uh, but the reason for that is because the post office is very, very careful with anything that's registered mail. Yes. So for instance, if, uh, if you send a first class package or a priority mail package and it's lost, nothing happens to any of the postal employees that were on there. They'll say, you know, don't lose that, you know, right. right. Have a good Tuesday, you know, yeah. nothing, nothing happens, but with registered mail, it has to be signed for and accounted for by a postal employee at every stop along the way. That's part of what slows it down. It's also kept under lock and key at night at the post or not just at night at all times. Right. Um, during USPS operation, unless it's en route to another destination. 
And if something happens to that package, there is accountability with the actual employees that were last handling it. So right. the employees are incentivized to make sure that this stuff goes where it's supposed to go and get there intact with no problems. Right. Uh, also, you know, I, I know that individuals don't have, you know, company insurance for shipping like this, but for a company like us, the lowest cost insurance for any form of shipment anywhere is registered mail. Right. And that's because there are so few incidents. Right. So if you individually are shipping, always do registered mail and always insure it for the full amount of closed. Yes. I would say that in any situation. Good advice. Good advice. Now, when it comes to us shipping to you, it's a little bit different because we have the element of time. If we right. ship every every piece of mail that we had registered mail, we would have no clients because everyone else would ship their stuff in you know two to three days and everyone would say, why is your shipping so slow? Right. Not only that, registered mail costs more. So free shipping that this uh, business offers wouldn't be so free anymore. Right. But um, uh, we we carry private insurance that covers all material until it is signed for and delivered to you. Uh, that's essential to this business. Any company in this business that doesn't have that, you shouldn't buy from. Right. Um, because if there is a problem, and there can be, uh, then there's nothing you can do. Um, but we have that insurance. Um, we ship primarily uh, three different ways. It's it's usually either UPS ground. Uh, it's priority mail or first class mail. Usually the smaller orders will be first class mail. Uh, sort of those medium kind of orders are uh, USPS priority, um, usually the signature required on the priority. And then uh, UPS ground, usually on the heavier, larger shipments um, with signature required as well. And um, the nice thing about that is usually those are getting there in two to three business days from where we are, usually anywhere in the continental U.S., unless there's some kind of USPS slowdown. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, our insurance covers it all the way until you get it. So if there's a problem, it's on us. It's not your problem. Uh, now, we do. if something does get lost, we do ask that you bear with us. Let us talk to the post office or UPS. Let us see if we can figure out what happened. Um, let's contact insurance, but you know, you're always protected. And that's why doing business with us instead of PMs for sale, which I know a lot of you like, um, or, you know, buying an eBay from individual sellers, things like that is a lot right. safer. Right. Very good. Well, thank you. That's appreciate that. That's a little long enough answer for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. And uh, speaking of which we're going to start now taking questions from the crap, from the viewers and appreciate all you guys popping in. It's a pretty active crowd tonight. So what we're going to do in the interest of time, we'll try to keep the answers um, concise if we can, but use four equal signs, four equal signs before your question. I'll be able to see that one, two, three, four equal and then question. And then we'll be able to see that. It'll be easy for you. It'll be easy for me. It'll be easy for Jonathan. And we're going to go through here. We got our first one from Redneck Stack that says, can you look into offering free shipping to Canada over a certain amount? Uh, that way we need to do. shipping in Canada is insane. Yeah, um, I don't know who decided that in Canada. Right. Uh, <clears throat> just to give you an idea, if I wanted to ship ten one ounce gold maples to Canada um, and drop ship it from a warehouse location, it would probably cost me at least seventy five dollars. Wow! Wow! It's it's crazy. It's not about the. It's not just about the amount. Um, right. The, I mean, excuse me, not just about the weight, it's about the amount too. Right. Um, I don't know why that is the way it is, but Canada shipping is, is insane. Right. Cool. Okay. Uh, very good. Thank you. Next question. Milled steel. What do you think about the recent ASE planchet shortage? Have you seen strong yeah. eagle sales at the Monument Metals in the last couple of months? Uh, well, excellent. Um, actually, the day that that happened, we went on Reddit and told everybody that was coming to so to buy your eagles before everyone raised their premium yeah you guys did but um what do i think about it i think that sunshine who makes all of those is very busy with other projects so um that got a little behind and maybe the u.s mint underestimated how many they, how many they would sell early in the year um 
I thought that Silver Eagle sales would slow, but honestly, they really haven't. Uh, right. We've still been selling a very good amount. Um, I think that shortage is pretty much over. Maybe give it another week or so. You'll see premiums return to normal on uh, 2019s. Um, we've seen it happen before. Uh, and we always try and inform the community when that does happen. But uh, my suggestion to the community when stuff like that does happen is just buy silver maples instead. Yeah, there you go. Very good. Now, this is a very specific question. You may not know because you may not have gotten these. I don't think you have them on your site or have, or have had them. But mm -hmm. uh, a, a viewer, Northeast, has gotten uh, – Reverse proof Libertads, which came out in 2018, limited mintage, beautiful coins, but they're not testing on the Sigma analytics of this precious metal verifier. Have you heard of that? Very good question. Yes. So Libertads are notorious, especially gold Libertads are notorious for not testing out on Sigma. Not just, okay, wow. Okay. It's not, it's not just the reverse proof, it's irregular. Um, uh, Okay. Regular gold. I have yeah. I have a half ounce yeah. gold. Right. I have a half ounce gold that, that and I tested after I talked to the Northeast. I tested mine and it came back okay, but some apparently aren't. He got yeah. an email. He got an email from Sigma Analytics saying that there's some known with, issue. What's that? It's a known issue with that. Yeah, with a high iron content or something like that. Strange. The coins are fine. I, I mean, if you XRF them, they're fine. Okay. But, uh, you know, if you. It, and this is, you know, a point about Sigma. Sigma is one of your tools. It's not right. all of your tools. Right, right, right. The biggest thing in terms of counterfeit or anything is all about who you're buying it from. If you're buying it from a company like us that is buying from approved suppliers, approved dealers, approved mints, and not doing a lot of secondary market business. Like we don't do a ton of secondary market business. Um, you can feel a lot better. That's, you know, half the battle right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's crazy. Wow. Anyways, um, all right, Silver Rhino. How about another spot buy? You think you have a you have an ongoing spot deal, don't you? Or or do you have a? Yeah, we <clears throat> we always on our site, uh, regardless of what's going on, we have a ten ounce silver rounds at spot deal, uh, which I'm sure many of you have already taken advantage of. But uh, it's a one per household limit, similar to what other dealers do. But uh, we offer that. Um, we try and offer things at spot whenever we can. Uh, the thing about offering things at spot is that hasn't been happening as much recently in the market. The market, since we lasted this almost six months ago, has heated up a little bit. You know, I would I would call the market the last time we did this maybe a three out of ten. Now I'd call it maybe a five out of ten. So premiums have come up a little bit. Right. Um, if there are going to be some spot deals in the near future, they will either be at spot or very near spot, you know, maybe a dollar or two over spot, usually for some world gold that you can buy cheaply, like one ducats, right? Builders, you know, those kind of things. But, you know, 90% at spot, um, other gold coins at spot is not happening right now. You ever have the case of the ducats? <laughs> I like ducats. I really do. I do too. I like them too. I like the four ducat. It's a real thin, uh, thin, flat kind of kind of neat looking piece. I but, think uh, I think world gold as a whole is really um, overlooked. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I want to Helvetia. You know, the Helvetia is a beautiful. Oh yeah, we've done we've done a ton of the twenty franc varieties, um, yeah. even some of the older varieties in the past. Not a spot, but uh, right. Right, you know, as cheap as we can get them, and uh, yeah, Michael Cabrin, Michael Cabrin, uh, who is the owner of MK Bars, uh, he wants to know why you don't carry hand poured products of silver art. Uh, just because we haven't gotten into it yet, uh, and to be honest, uh, we get a lot of suggestions from uh, our clientele about things that they like and things that they like us to carry. Yeah, but to be honest with you, not many people have asked for a poured. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's a demand. Well, if you guys want it, ask and we'll probably do it. Right. There you go. Okay. So there you go. RTS guy, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> all right. Very good. All right. I don't know. Good question. Just for me saying that, I'm surprised I able to say that. Universal Vibes TV, what is your most popular coin sold ever above 
ASE. So in other words, ASD yeah. is a given. What would oh, be that's, the that's a given. Yeah. Oh man, let me think about that for a second. Most popular coin ever. Um, I'll put it this way. Um, one of the more surprising uh, coins that we ended up doing really well on recently are the, um, and they're not even out yet, the, uh, the uh, Leopold series, the Austrian Leopold series. Yeah. Are you, you guys familiar with this? It's, yes. it's going to be a three coin series. Right. The first one is out. The second one's in pre-order. The third one hasn't been shown yet. Right. We sold a lot of those coins. Those have been wow. really popular. Uh, but, it, you know, in terms of historically, other than Silver Eagles, uh, you know, something interesting. We sold, uh, we sell a lot of sovereigns. Sovereigns are really popular. Right. People that want fractional gold but don't want to pay the premium. Right. That's, that's a big one. Yeah, definitely. That is good. Yeah. I heard some issues with this Leopold series. Somebody posted a video with someone where some like milk spotting and and some scrapes and stuff. Usually there's usually the Austrian mint does pretty good. Um, uh, well, I, I have heard that in the shipment, I've heard from some other dealers that uh, the boxes, while they came sealed, some of the coin tubes had opened coming overseas. And okay. some of the coins had kind of rattled around a bit. Right. Uh, but uh, I mean, with the ones that we had, uh, we were we were pretty happy with the condition. All right, Plot the Pioneer asks, are you guys charging sales taxes yet? Not yet. Uh, that is an ongoing uh, thing. Um, I, I know that a lot of dealers aren't yet, uh, right. but it's just a matter of time until we yeah. all we all are. Right, right. AU Rebel uh, asks, what box would you use for registered mail? Real quick, by the way, about the sales tax thing. Yes. Um, I just want to point something else out. Um, there is an industry-wide uh, group that sort of lobbies on behalf of the precious metals industry. I, yeah, intang uh, intangible tangible assets or something like that, it, right? It, ICTA. It, ICTA. Uh, and um, if you guys want to help not pay sales tax, donate to them. They will. Uh, they're the ones who are the ones going – basically door to door at all these state capitals trying to get right. sales tax exemptions for each one of those states. They, they can only do so much. So if you don't right. want to pay sales tax in the future. Talk to them. Very cool. All right. So a hey, rebel ask, what box would you use for registered mail? Uh, so if I'm sending registered mail, I would probably use a medium flat rate box with the post office. Okay. And what I would do is, you know, that's sort of the outer box. And what a lot of people will do is they'll put stuff in that box, tape it with the tape they have at home, just throw stuff in there. That's not good enough because the way that the post office throws these things around, it's very easy to open that outer box. So what right. I suggest is what I like to call a box in a box strategy. So yeah. find a box that is slightly smaller than that medium flat rate box taped up when it's taped up. And then put your stuff in that box, seal that, then put that in the medium flat rate box, then put that, you know, tape together and then send it. And usually that's all you need. Right. Very good. Very good. Uh, Barry Dutton sells homes is just telling me that he blogged early on about the Canada Post ban shipping PMs by mail. Actually, I had covered that too. It wasn't, they didn't totally ban PMs. It was kind of a, it was a mix up with, with the stuff they had on there. But thank you, Barry. Um, Silver High says, um, what are upcoming designs for monument rounds for the, well, uh, we'll cover that. I really want to save that one. Can we save, save that, that one? one? We're going to talk about that at the end. We're going to talk about the land, the landmark series at the end, but thanks silver heist. Um, spectacular says I need some monument metal swag. Where can I buy some? Well, hmm. I know who that is. Um, how's it going? Um, we're working on a few ideas. Um, you know, as many of you know, if you've gone on our site, you've noticed our prices are, lower than most of the other dealers, if not all. Um, you know, we could charge Atmex prices and give you tons of swag. Right. Or we could charge lower prices and give you less swag. So I think most people choose less swag, but we do have a couple of things in the works. You'll see some too. Very cool. All right. Thanks. All right. We're going to go through these a little faster now because some of these are stacking up here. Silver bean counter. How far in advance do dealers know about new coins? Are there rules about pre-selling? 
So I wish we knew further in advance than we actually do. Many times we'll hear about them maybe a week or a couple days in advance. Uh, usually there is some kind of embargo on when you can promote just to make sure there's an even playing field. Um, like for instance, the uh, I mentioned the 10 ounce black bull. There was an embargo on those until uh, Monday of this past week. So I knew about those last week. Well, I mean, we all knew those were coming out. We had images and details and all that about a week ago, but we had to wait until uh, the embargo date happened. Cool. All right. Thank you. So at like 12 to 1 a.m. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very good. All right. 143 Druid asked if you saw, saw my interview with Atmex and uh, the question I posed about them about price throttling to new limited minutes or pre sale mints. Uh huh. Yeah. I saw some of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm, no comment. Okay, all right. Northeast says, what's up with the Germania Mania with all these low mintage $200 and $300 ounce rounds? Uh, I don't know if you, you guys, did you guys get the Germanians? We, we don't, so <clears throat> you, you asked, you know, what is our business about in the beginning? Let me tell you what our business is not about. Our business is not about burying people in coins that they'll never get out of. Right. Um, now, if you're a collector and you want to pay, you know, $200 over spot for something, be my guest. Yeah. Um, buy one, put it away somewhere. Don't buy 10 or right. more. You know? um, so, you know, one thing that I feel strongly about, um, and, you know, some people may like this, others may not, uh, is, you know, I feel that dealers should have a little more responsibility to the community as a whole with what they offer. And to me, offering that material is not something that I'm interested in. Um, in general, I mean, if you if you want that stuff, you can go find it. Right. Um, uh, and that kind of goes as well for a lot of modern certified coins. Um, you know, you know, doing a lot of business about you know MS seventy and you know that whole situation. Right. Cool. Uh, all right. That's enough for us here. And, and by the way, any question you don't feel comfortable answering, by all means, don't feel any pressure. There aren't many. There, there aren't many that I won't answer. Uh, Michael Kerbrin asks, how many employees do you have? Uh, a lot. <laughs> More than we need. More than you need. Chris Garner says, because of the shortage, do people buy backdated eagles? Uh, when, you know, I think you mentioned that earlier. Talked yeah, about that. So, so we did see an uptick on uh, backdated eagles, but honestly, not as much as I thought we would. Right. Um, we still had a lot of people stick with the 19s. I think when people order silver eagles, there's sort of this expectation that if they're not ordering current date, that they're not going to be nice. Right. Um, which is not the case, but right. uh, I think that may be what some people are thinking. Right. Uh, Redneck Stacker, we kind of answered that before um, about poured silver. He hasn't really seen a lot of demand for it. Um, but in I mean, the there, other is, there is demand, but I mean, you know, how much demand? You how know, much is demand? There, yeah. Is there silver eagle demand for poured silver? No. Right. But, right. You know, there's some demand. Very good. All right. Very good. And do any of the thoughts on it or did you stack it yourself? So I'm not much of a stacker, to be honest. And all of the major players in this business that are stackers end up buried in their stack. <laughs> right. Nobody, I mean, all the stackers know you don't want to sell your stack. You just keep stacking. Keep right. Going. Right. Yep. And as, as someone who's involved in this business, that's actually a negative because you just keep all this cool stuff that you want and then you have just way too much inventory that you're sitting on. Yeah. So I, you know, as I'm a pretty boring stacker, I buy Eagles, Maples, um, silver rounds, silver bars, uh, a lot of 90% junk silver. That's the kind of stuff that I buy and, right. and hold. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not as interesting that way, I guess. Yeah, no, I, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's a specialized thing. There's a lot of amazing pieces. I know MK Bars does a does a wonderful job with a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah and, I, uh, I know a lot of those. And and then there's also private pours as well. There's a whole community of them uh, um, here called Metals Mafia, and they do a lot of great stuff. So you know, it's just it's it's amazing the selection of stuff out there. Anyways, moving ahead. Besides customer service and competitive prices, how do you compete with the big sites? Well, CM, CM, for, CM, for so. one thing, I think it's easier than it used to be. Um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, competing with the major players in the market then, like Blanchard and Monex 
and Gold Line and all those guys who are not as big as they used to be. Um, that used to be really hard. But nowadays, um, where the market is and uh, with uh, the way that it's become easier to work with larger wholesale dealers, um, it's, it's just, the whole thing is much easier than it used to be. I can be just as competitive, if not more competitive price-wise than some of the larger companies. Um, I'm also able to be, uh, we are able to be a lot more flexible um, with what we're doing. Um, we can offer, uh, you know, more interesting deals that maybe other companies can't. Like for instance, let's, one of the a popular deal we've done before are uh, Napoleon the first 20 francs. Those are really cool, interesting coins. But, uh, you know, you never find those in quantity. So you may find 50 or 100 of those coins together at once. That's a great deal for us. We can offer a great price, interesting story, offer something that most dealers don't have. But if you run that product to Amex and say, we want to run an email offer to that, you know, 100 coins doesn't do it for them. You, know, that's, right. you can't run an email like that if you're Amex. You, you just can't. Um, so we try and focus on... Um, doing all of the big things and sort of the the standard things just as well, if not better, uh, than the big boys do. And uh, you know, I, I've heard from some other uh, some other major dealers that you know they're hearing from our customers as well. So you know, we're not nothing. But um, uh, I think I think flexibility is a big one. I think I think you know, customer service is not just you know taking a phone call and solving somebody's problem right it's, you know not necessarily providing advice but providing suggestions trying to get to the bit, bottom of what someone is trying to do and really kind of point them in the right direction we get a ton of calls and emails from people that are brand new so many people that buy have never done this before because it's not a typically american thing to do historically but um, you know, those, those are the kind of things we like to specialize in because we feel if we create a relationship with those people early, that they'll know that they can talk to us, trust us and, and move on from there. Very good. All right. Um, Silver Wolverine. Have you heard the song for Silver Wolverine? We all live in a Silver Wolverine. <laughs> Silver Wolverine. I like it. He's asking if you think the uh, American Silver Eagle total minage for 2019 will be over or under 20 million. Right now, if I had to bet, I would say under because, under. Of, uh, because of the delay. Right, right. Cool. All I right. mean, like I said, the market is not great. It, I'd still call it, you know, a four or a five out of ten. You know, right. we're not. We're not in the 2011, 12, 13 range where you're minting 40 million silver eagles a year. Right, right. Very good. All right, let me get back up here. Lost my space here. Uh, we've got a lot of questions. You guys, I wish there was a way. I want to get people to, to interact in the chat, but I'm missing some questions here. So maybe let's see here. Uh, Keep them coming, guys. Yeah. Thank let's see here. Uh, let me get back up to where... Oh, let's see here. Where are we at? Um, okay, Ter tricky guy. What supply side issues are the most concerned to you? Do you have one or suppliers? Uh, I mean, as of right now, except for the Silver Eagle issue, um, supply is pretty good. Um, good. Sunshine is, is really delayed right now. If you go on our site, you'll notice that a lot of the Sunshine material is out of stock. It's not Probably because you can't get it. Right. Sorry. It's probably because they're busy doing the uh, planchets for the uh, eagles. They're they're busy doing a lot of things. Yeah. But um, uh, it's not just that. You know, I can go out and buy sunshine material. But the problem is, if I go out and buy sunshine material and ask when will I have it, they'll say, well, we don't know soon. And to me, that's not fair. Um, sell that on the site and without a realistic expectation of when they're going to be here. Right. John P., ever come across Newfoundland gold coins? Not not often, no. Okay. Let's see. Where's the next one here? Moving down. Uh, Big Armory. We How have the various 50th anniversary Apollo 11 sales been going for Monument Metals? Do you guys carry those? Well, so <clears throat> we did a buyback program from the Mint. We did it uh, last year, too, with the Palladium Eagles when those came out. Uh, 
So we offered to pay people over the mint price to buy them. Um, and I think people, people think that we retail those. We usually, we try not to because the prices on those buyback things can be very volatile. Right. And a lot of times people will take them and sell them on eBay and make more than we're offering. And look, more power to you. But to be honest with you, there have been way more many times when people buy and the price comes down and they lose money. Then, you know, why not take the guaranteed money with us is my thinking. But uh, when, when those things happen, usually we wholesale them um, to other companies. We don't like to hold on to them while the price drops. Uh, so it's not a huge money maker for us. Uh, we make a small amount of money and move on. Uh, we and as I said earlier, we don't do a lot in certified uh, modern stuff. But the coins themselves are really cool. Um, the mint quoted that they uh, were out of stock until October 29th, and either they have enough cancellations that they're starting to ship some of the back orders, or they're yeah. just way ahead of schedule we're starting to get more of those initially committed coins in now. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. So, Which yeah. is awesome. That's good. Mio Cena, very nice. Uh, Mio Cena sent a super chat, um, um, helping me get the Queen's Beast. I, still, I need to get the new Queen's Beast, actually. Yeah, and you guys carry those, don't you? We do. Uh, you know, the Queen's Beast are going to be the kind of thing, buy them when they're out, uh, because once they're out, they're out. Right. And some of those early... Queens Bees releases, I mean, I could call a hundred dealers and not find any. Right. You know, especially on those 10 ounce versions, the Griffins and Lions, can't get those anywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, we still have some of the uh, two ounce Griffins that are nice. Wow. Uh, uh, but, uh, and we lowered our, I think our price is pretty low on those, but uh, I think people are, you know, magically hoping the prices will come down on those. Yeah. They're not going to. Right. By the way, guys, stay tuned. There will be a special uh, coming uh, later um, at the, the, towards the end of the interview. So, so Coins A to Z is asking about a coupon code. Stay tuned. There'll be something coming up here. Um, I'll put it this, you won't need a coupon code, but I'll tell you. We'll tell you what it is. Coupon again. code. And again, if you want to ask a question, I'm looking for four equal signs. I'm scrolling down now. I don't see the four equal. So I'm looking for four equal signs before your question. That's going to be the clue that is meant for. Uh, um, um, Jonathan, or yeah, super guys, guys I, I really enjoy um, doing this Q and A. Giving back to the community is big for us. We like doing it. Um, so not just for this time, but you know, for any time in the future. If you guys have questions you want answered, send them to Sal. Email us. Uh, we can answer, or you can send it to Sal. And the next time we're on, you know, we can we can do it. Yeah, that'd be great, definitely. Kevin W says, "What are Canadian maples usually a better buy than American eagles?" I like maples. Um, I'm surprised they don't sell even more. I mean, you know, I'd say it's probably the second most popular silver product. Um, the negative about silver maples for years was that they had terrible milk spotting. Um, but there was a lot of skepticism last year when the Royal Mint, uh, not the Royal Mint, the Royal Canadian Mint uh, came out with their Mint Shield program, which is basically the special yep. formula to stop uh, milk spotting. A lot of people didn't think that would work. It worked, and it works really well. And to me, with the radial lines, the improved um, security features, um, the lower cost, um, and they hold their premium as well, I think Silver Maples are a great buy. Cool. Awesome. And uh, what do you – the stacking nerd, who is uh, another awesome member of the community here, says, what coin bar round are you most excited for in 2019? Well, I, I was pretty excited for the Queen's Beast. I really like those. Um, uh, something else that's coming. See, the problem is you know you don't always know what's coming. Um, gold Libertads uh, are always really exciting. Um, I Except think for now with the now I'm no leery yeah. about them now. Actually, uh, no, no. I mean, it's all about who you buy from. But um, the uh, the gold Libertads are always really popular, and they're always really limited mintage. Right. Uh, I forget which size it was last year. I think it was 10th ounce uh, gold Libertads last year were really limited. We usually come out with those very early, and I see dealers get really crazy with the premiums they charge on those. 
Uh, we usually don't do that. We usually just pick a price where we make money and then just sell it for that. So I, I think we have a really good relationship with those. So I'm excited about those. All right. Milled steel is there downside to stacking larger kilo or 100 ounce silver bars. If you get silver rounds for the same price as a larger bar and they're more desirable with a higher resale premium. I mean, you know, I don't know that there's necessarily always a higher resale premium. It just depends who you're selling it to and what the market's like when you sell it. Right. Uh, I'd say a little bit of to each their own. Um, you know, some clients don't like tying up $1,600 in a bar that they can't cut in half, whereas they like the, the flexibility of having the rounds. Um, I'd say more people buy rounds um, because they like that flexibility and the price is close enough. Right. Um, uh, and then I think it kind of gets into a question of storage as well. I think people feel a little intimidated holding the larger bars on their own, but I think you could do it either way, whatever makes you more comfortable. Very good. Okay, Maple Hedgehog, did buying policy change when the price of silver jumped up at the beginning of this decade? Of course, he um, – he uh, he didn't uh, he wasn't in business at the beginning of that game. Well, not with Monument Metals, but I was in the business. Right, uh, right, that's right. Yeah, but uh, if silver goes up to fifty bucks an ounce, will you will you be buying? Oh uh, yeah. So what you got to remember is that if silver went, let's say silver silver went to fifty dollars an ounce tomorrow, right? The people that are selling, you know, people are thinking this is going higher still. So not only will you have more selling, you'll have more buying too. People believe that it will be going higher. That's exactly what happened in 2011. A lot of dealers stopped hedging their inventory because it kept going higher and they didn't think it would come down. And then it dropped from $45 to $33 overnight and people went out of business. So um, I think there will be, if we see continued uh, higher prices, I think you'll see uh, no changes in people willing to buy. If anything, I think buying premiums may, will go up because demand will be higher. Um, but, you know, that depends on your dealer. We try and be strong on all of our buybacks. But uh, I know a lot of other dealers do as well. Very good. All right. I've got to ask this. The Stacking Stormtrooper sent us a super chat to get the attention for a question. The Stacking Stormtrooper, another great channel. Do you offer discounts to Stormtroopers? Uh if you can show us your stormtrooper license. All right. There you go. All right. Very good. Uh, uh, let's see here. RTS guy, would Monument Metals really get back to the customers unlike spectacular recent experience with Atmex, non-existence customer service? Um, I haven't seen that video. I, did, I think I did. I saw, saw the, the uh, thumbnail. I need to watch that video. But uh, uh, would Monument Metals really get back to their customers unlike, I'm not sure what the, Really you get mean like, back. You mean like call them or email them? Is that is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah it sounds like yeah. That's been kind of the theme of the uh, interview. Yeah, they definitely will, right? I mean, I'm yeah. speaking for you. Yeah, yeah. of course. I mean, if someone yeah. has a question, we try and answer as quickly as possible, whether it be by phone or email. Um, I would say this about dealers in general: if you send something to a dealer and they don't get back to you the first time, the odds are is that it's nothing personal. They may have just missed your email by accident. Right. Uh, in my, my feeling personally is even though this is an online business, uh, you know, the majority of it's an online business, call. Ask right. for somebody important. You know, one of the big things about our company is you can talk to me on the phone. You can't go talk to anybody important at any of the other biz big businesses. Right. Uh, talking to decision makers, ask for somebody, you know, be polite. You, you want them to help you if you've got a problem. Um, you know, we want to help anyone that, that would have an issue. I think other companies would too. Um, calling, getting to know the company, getting to know right. the people, I think still matters. Right. Just another average stacker says, would you ever consider a YouTube tour of your facility? YouTube tour? Um, I think our insurance company would really not like it. <laughs> I mean, like, like, just kind of like, you know, I mean, in, in, in the words, like, film a YouTube video of some of the, you know, the, the facility. Oh, yeah, we, we'd probably do something like that. Um, yeah. We don't do anything on YouTube right now, but we right. should. Right. Uh, but, yeah, we would do, like, a, a non-secure area. Yeah. There you go, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, yeah, Barry Dutton's uh, sales homes. Uh, the Canada Post, yeah, but for him, uh, yeah, we talked about that earlier, um, and he he talked about it as well. I posted a video about it, but Barry Dutton posted a blog about that. But thank you, Barry. Let's see. 
Uh, and uh, Michael Cabrin asked, do you use credit lines to buy a product or pay cash? No, no, we don't do anything with credit lines. Okay. Um, we do real business with real money. Um, <clears throat> so we're not floating money when we do business. All right, let's see here. All right, all right, guys, uh, let's see here. I'm only looking for questions that have the four equal signs in front of them because there's so much to go through here. So if you need to ask a question, then you have to put four equal signs. And Terry well, Rabideau- I'm glad we have lots of questions. Terry Rabideau says, why, Sal, why? She's asking me that just for fun. Donna, New Mexico, do you have and do you have the 2019 incused maple leaf, gold or silver? I mean, we're offering it for sale, but they're not in yet. Um, I think, on, I'll tell you, uh, I think next week or maybe the week after, let me go look. It says week of March 25th, so two weeks. Cool. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, Dr. Oh, first year they're doing the golden keys. Last yep. year it was the silver. Yep, because uh, that was uh, to commemorate the, because uh, the Eagle started, or the Maple started in 1988 for the silver, and then the gold was in 1989, right? Or no, 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 79, 79. Right, 79. Um, uh, Doctor Who asked veteran discounts. Will you do, you do veteran discounts for veterans? We don't have an official policy, but if you have a question and you want a discount on something, contact me. We'll All right. Me. All right, let's see. Okay, we asked a stacking stormtrooper. Sorry, I would just... Trying to go in a row there, Stacking Stormtrooper, but we got you. Um, by the way, if Super Chat questions will take precedence from now on. We'll go straight to those, and I'll tell you, even if I lose my place, we'll go to those Super Chat questions first. Jeb Blake says, what are your thoughts on the increase in fake Asian coins? I know fake Chinese stuff coming from China, stuff like that. What are my feelings about it? Buy yeah. dealers who you can trust. Yep. It's that easy. Silver Wolverine, the Queen's Beast mintage is mysterious. Do you know any of the mintages? No. Yeah. Does anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, good question. All right. Slacker Stacker was here for a little bit. Good to see you, Slacker Stacker. Let's see here. All right. Um, uh, X ZXC. John, did you know that the U.S. Mint had hundreds of the five ounce silver Apollo coins in Baltimore on February the 28th? Yeah, they did it as a special uh, release at, what was that, the Baltimore show? Yeah, the Baltimore show. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Uh, Maple Hedgehog, has there been any kind of significant increase in platinum sales since the price is low before it gets back yeah. close to gold? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we sell, you know, in, in some of my first jobs in this business, uh, promoting or talking about platinum was just a complete waste of time. Um but that has really changed. We sell way more platinum than I ever thought we would. Um, in all kinds, we sell the platinum Queen's Beast. We sell platinum bars, a lot of maples, a lot right. of, you know, uh, plat we, we did a deal on uh, the platypus uh, in platinum. Oh, did you? I think those are out. I think those are gone. But okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, all kinds of platinum. I just wish there were more fractional platinum options that were cost effective. Right. But, uh, those don't really seem to be out there right now. Yeah, they're kind of hard to find. Medio Man says to tell you that a customer in Toronto who got who got dinged twice for HST due to tax on ball bearings has gotten his money back. Oh, I think I know who that is. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Uh, Matt Bunke says I did the bunk the starter pack. JM Silver Bowl Provident Monument. Monument was the only one that allowed e check. Thank you. Very good. All right. E check. Awesome. Why are Mexican Libertads so expensive? He says Libertards there, but he meant Libertads. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, with a lot of these things, when it comes to cost, there's you know a lot of thinking of why is this so much more? Um, and what is the, the principle? It's like Occam's Razor, the most yeah. uh, the simple. The most simple explanation is usually the correct one. Right. It's because the mints charge us more for them. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Um, uh, okay. Michael Cabrin asked, if you were going to personally make or design a product, what would it look like? Hmm. Uh, you're going to find out a little bit later. <laughs> find out in just a moment, Michael Cabrin. But good question. That's a good setup question. We're going to get that. Good setup. Nice job. 
Yes, that was a good one. All right, let me get see here. All right. I'm going as fast as I can, guys. Sorry, I just lost my place again. Crap, there's a lot of questions here. Dr. Nigel Ramsey. By the way, if you've asked a question before, hold off for a little bit. Hold off. If you've asked a question before, please hold off on asking questions so I can get to some of these others. I'm, I'm going to skip to people who've, who just have now started to ask questions. Dr. Nigel Ramsey, do you think the U.S. Mint should make a better effort at quality control when it comes to the ATB 5-ounce silver series? Yeah, we all do. Yep, yep. Uh, he's not in his head. Which, real quick, interesting happening today on the Lowell ATBs, which have been forever delayed by the U.S. Mint. Yes. Uh, we are, I did get word, they are shipping next week. From cool. the Mint, so they're finally coming. And now, guys, I can't prove it, but from my discussions with major wholesalers, I think this is going to be a really low mintage one. Wow. Uh, normally, when we buy these, we can buy, uh, not, I don't want to say unlimited because we can't, but um, if we need a sizable amount, we can get it, um, especially if we act early. Yeah. And we've been acting very early from the beginning on this, and we wound up with about 20% of the amount of coins that I wanted to end up with. Right. And right. That's not from lack of tribe. Nice. Thank nice. you for that tip. Terry Rabideau, how much will you pay me for my silver? <laughs> uh, as much as we possibly can without losing money. <laughs> uh, fossil metals, do you ever see the markets being cornered by the big guys ever again? Like a Hunt Brothers situation. I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, I think we all hear, do, believe to some degree that there's some, some manipulation in this market. I believe yeah. the paper markets have made this uh, very possible and could continue. Uh, do I believe a Hunt brother situation will happen? No. Uh, but uh, again, the manipulation paper wise, I think will continue. Right. Silver Rhino says LCS, but I don't know what he me means by that. Less local coin shop. I don't know what, uh, what he's talking about there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, if we have like a walk in, Kind of thing. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, yeah. Do you have the walk-in shop? So we we have an office. It's it's appointment only. Um, we do online. We do it really well. Um, if you want to stop in and see us, pick something up, order something, and, and come pick it up. Um, see if we have something or want to sell to us in person. You can. Um, but like I said, we're primarily online. Just give us a call. Let us know when you want to come. Um, in terms of our office here that I'm actually in right now. We have multiple warehouses and offices around the country. This is our, you know, HQ, if you want to call it that. Right. Uh, but uh, I would say that, you know, if you're wanting just to stop in and look around at things, it's not really what we do. But um, if you want to come buy something, give us a call. Let us know what you want. It may not be in this location, but we can bring it in from one of our other locations in a day or two right. or whatever. And okay. Yeah. And people, and then another thing too, stop repeating questions. Doctor Who has asked, I don't know how many times we've already answered the question about veterans discounts, but that's part of the reason they asked your question once. I'm trying to be meticulous and going through these one at a time here, trying to get everyone in as I can, but the more you type and the harder it is, I've got to kind of go through these, but, uh, um, so yeah, but we have answered Doctor Who's question. All right. So let's hear Barbara Carbone. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, she um, she's just repeating his question. Um, uh, let's see here. All right, very good. Uh, all right, Mr. Vegeta, please tell John I'm gonna do a video in a bit. Had to change my camcorder. Okay, Mr. Vegeta, you know Mr. Vegeta. I uh, do. DB uh, Stupid says, will you be offering the Mick Jagger licked bars? Hmm, is that a real thing or is that a joke? I'm not sure. I don't. I, I, I haven't heard of it. The community. I think somebody did a, a licking coin challenge. Never mind. I think that's it. Uh, let's see here. Come do my disc brakes on my Jeep. Okay, Christopher. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sending like I know how to do anything with cars. I mean, that that would be quite a. You yeah. don't want that to happen. Everybody's telling me I'm way behind here. We're trying to get ahead. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Moving ahead. All right. Northeast. What are you? What is your goal to silver stack ratio? And what should most people try to get it to? I'm I'm heavier on silver. I'm probably 70-30 on silver. Um, what I see most people doing 
is I see silver as the more speculative of the two. Um, as you know, when gold and silver prices move, normally in terms of percentage, silver moves higher or lower faster than gold. Right. Uh, and I, I think that's true most of the time. Um, so I think people that have more time to invest and are a little more profit motivated will do more silver than gold. Um, and then the closer to retirement age you get, or the, the less um, risk averse, or excuse me, the more risk averse you are, um, the more gold they would buy. Right. Very good. All right. DB Stupid just says, wanted to thank you for taking the time to interact with us. So, yeah, I, I agree. Thank you for doing that. Yes, okay. th thank you for coming. I mean, I can't interact if you guys don't ask anything. Yeah, and they're asking a lot, so we're trying. I'm trying to catch up here. Let's see here. Okay, um, uh, Donald saying, "Why can't you keep up?" I think I've explained why. Let's see here. Uh, okay, let me see. Did you have okay. Moderators, didn't you have moderators last time? Yeah, yeah, and Eric is here now, which is cool. Okay, Thanks. all right, appreciate okay, it, Eric. Eric. Yeah, Eric, he's awesome, and and actually Barbara Carbone is a moderator too. So oh, is it well, Barbara too? Thanks. Uh, all is one now is being silly. He says, would this guy lie to us? No, I don't think he would. All right. Douglas Jones, do you think the U.S. Mint will ever make a two-ounce or five-ounce ASE? I, I, I hope that they would. I bet it would be incredibly popular. I would, be, I, the, I would, I would be in the two-ounce camp. About yeah. That. And, uh, and the thing is, is they can't do it without an act of Congress, literally. Oh. Arsenal fan says, hi, Jonathan, your thoughts on the quality control issues at the U.S. Mint? We talked about that earlier, especially in regards to ATB series. I guess we, have, we already answered that one. They do the Silver Eagles flawlessly. Yeah. Eric C., what is your personal view on the numismatic value of the Pablo Coins percentage to mill compared to other small U.S. Mint offerings? And they move. I, think it's, I think it's changing every day, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Those things are very hard to predict. I think where the market is right now on the certified coins is actually pretty reasonable. Um, something that I would call not reasonable are what happened with last year's um, proof uh, Palladium Eagles. Those were crazy. Like those were, I think those sold for thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars a piece when they came out just raw. And certified first day of issues went for like seven thousand dollars. I mean, that's you know that's not wow. holding up. But to me, the Apollo issue is a little more down to earth. So I would say that's better than the Palladium Eagle was. Right. Very good. All right, Len D. What are your thoughts on J.P. Morgan acquiring so much silver in such a short period of time? I mean, they've been acquiring silver. They've been the largest net buyers in their history of what the past six or seven years while well, they've been telling everyone to sell. So what well, I the thing too is they're, they're acquiring for other clients too. I mean, that, that I think that's what people don't realize is they don't own it all or, you know, or there's not, they say, they say own all the silver, but there's not been any evidence that they, that they have all this, that they, they have the uh, storage facility, but it doesn't mean it's all theirs. They may just be a uh, custodian. Right. 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 Yeah. See, I've, been, I've been to some of those big New York vaults. They never let you go in there. Right. How much is there? You never know. But uh, I'm not much of a conspiracy guy. Uh, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I think I think it's pretty plain. I mean, you know, you know, follow what people do, know what, not what they say. Right. Fossil metals, metals, silver. Right. Fossil metals. Do you think it's right that the market paper silver dictates the value of the physical? That's kind of a piggyback in what we just talked about. I don't, I don't know because the, the paper market all by itself is not entirely evil. I mean, there's definitely some, I mean, we use, we use that to hedge. I mean, you know, we hedge our inventory with paper. Sometimes we do it with products, but we, you know, we hedge it that way with shorts and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, I would say that there probably in the future will be a bit of a dichotomy between paper price and physical price. And I think you'll see it manifest in buyback and selling premiums. I think you already see it a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I think it'll be more pronounced in the future. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Alan, we covered Alan's question. We talked about JP Morgan silver buying. And uh, let's see here. Moving ahead. Um, 
I'm going to just skip past the silly questions now. Just want to get the, uh, uh, let's see here, find another one. I don't want to miss people's questions. Uh, uh, when does the new, okay, uh, DD Prepper says, when does the new monument series start? Stay tuned. We're going to talk about that here at the end. We'll get there. But good question for sure. All right, let's see here. All right, now, uh, let's see here. Um, about an hour. <laughs> yeah, uh, Carl Electrum, how does he feel about Simpsons coins' future value? I guess that's we kind of talked about that with really any I'm kind sorry, of. Did you, say, did you say Simpsons? Simpsons, yeah, from the Perth Mint. There's this whole series of Simpson coins. Uh, yeah, I know. I saw that. I just didn't hear you. Um, yeah. How much do you like the Simpsons? <laughs> Yeah, that's the question. Um, we don't, right. don't sell them. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, I think I might be caught up. Um, okay, Bob Wolf. Um, yeah, we talked about uh, Monument Metals. We're going to create their own uh, generic rounds of bars. We're going to be talking about that very soon here. Um, so I think we've caught up on the questions. So anybody else want to ask questions, put four equal signs. And uh, let's take questions from people who have not asked a question before. Yeah, and, people, and, you guys can ask about, you know, serious questions about pretty much anything you want. I, yeah, I, try and I mean, we like to have fun too, you know. but because of because it's so busy in here, I, it's I'd rather just do the serious questions and uh, and we can joke around here after a bit. But there's so many questions coming, I don't want to miss them. So, yes, and if you really want your question asked, like a stormtrooper did make a super chat and I'll go directly to that one. How's that? All right. So I don't miss your question. ZXC, what do you think of the high premium uh, $100 one ounce silver coins at the 2018 ultra high relief dog? We, he kind of, we kind of talked about that earlier, but you want to kind of re, I actually reviewed that coin from you really like it by one. Yeah, there you go. If you like it by one, that's right. And you're never going to get that. You, there's no guarantee you're going to get that premium back on coins like that. No right. matter what. Absolutely not. Uh, Calderon two zero nine one the two thousand nineteen reverse proof Libertad. Will you get those for the silver? I I would like to. Cool. All right. M uh, Sinister eighty five. What's up with the uh, with car purchases costing so much more? With with what costing so much more? Like credit card or debit card? T is D E I T. That's a good question. All right. Okay. So. I don't know who did this, but there's a genius in the credit card lobby. So, um, you know, basically what you have is you have a check price and then the credit card price, which is a little bit more. Most businesses make enough margin on the products they sell to just bake it into the price of everything. So in a way, for every um, other type of business, you're paying the credit card price even when you pay cash. So you're really being cheated out of that percentage. On all those purchases. So if you go to if you go to McDonald's and buy a Big Mac, I don't know. I'm just making up a number. Let's say it's five dollars. If you buy a Big Mac and pay credit card, it's five dollars. If you buy a Big Mac and pay cash, it's five dollars. Really, with the credit card fees and all that, if you're paying cash, you're paying you know three percent ish more than you should for it. Right. Uh, in the precious metals business, the margins are so low that the difference in the credit card fee is the difference between making money and losing money. Um, and that's unique to this business. So that's why you'll see all of the sites have a cash price or check price and a credit card price. And somebody in the credit card lobby um, is really smart because the credit card lobby had um, something passed uh, in, in some kind of bill. I don't know what the bill is. Maybe you guys can look it up. But uh, essentially, it is illegal for me as a business to say that we charge more money for credit card purchases. So the way we have to word it is we have to word it as a cash discounted price. Okay. So that's the history of that one. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that. Um, 143 Druid, have you seen an increased demand in constitutional coins? I, I don't know that I'd say increased. Um, that's always really popular. Um, to be honest, I'm surprised more people aren't buying even more of it right now. Premiums have kind of spiked earlier this year and late last year, but they're coming back down. Right. Cool. All right. Eric says, do you see a preference via sales in particular gold one ounce coins like the Eagle Maple Buffalo? Good question. Uh, 
I'm a big Buffalo fan. Buffalo's cool. cool. Very cool coins. Um, you know, a little bit higher premium, but you get what you pay for and it holds its value. Yeah. Nice. Do you think the proof coins are worth the extra price, DW? I guess any proof coins. That's kind of a collector thing, really, I guess, isn't it? Silver Silver Eagle proofs, yes. Yeah. Um, some of the others, not as much. Um, but in general, if you're buying proofs, I would either buy them on pre-sale when you can get really good deals on them or wait until you can get some kind of deal later on where somebody has too many. Um, that's what I would do with, with proof. Higher Media asked, I want to sell you my Morgan dollars from the 1800s. Should I clean them first? No. <laughs> exactly. No, don't do that. Never, okay. never clean a coin. That's right. Don't do it. Um, uh, I mean, like, you're bullying, you're bullying coins at home. You can you know, put them in jewel luster or jewelry cleaner just to take some toning off if you don't like it. But yeah. on collector coins, don't do that. Yeah, we actually uh, – this next question we actually did cover, I think, in the last interview, but I'll let you address it again. If you guys implement – this is from Northeast. If you guys implemented a buyer loyalty point system that can be used for product, you would get my business. But I think that your answer for this, I think, is going to be good. Okay. I mean, buyer loyalty, uh, well, it, I mean, it's something I guess we could uh, incorporate. Um, if you'll notice, um, our prices are lower than almost everybody else on essentially everything we sell. So there's not a whole lot of room in in there for that. So your model is just keep prices low from the beginning and just keep uh, you, know, uh, you know, to me, our advantage is not that we are the lowest price guy. You know, we'll leave that for SD. If SD wants to lose money on orders, they can. But, um, you know, my goal um, in having this business is to have and maintain a stable business that you're not going to have to worry about whether it will be here or not. Right. Uh, buyer loyalty is something we absolutely want. We work really hard to get it and keep it. I think you'll find, when you speak to other people that have used us, that we go above and beyond to help out anyone, even beyond our terms and conditions and all that kind of stuff. If somebody has an issue or whatever, uh, uh, as of right now, I don't have plans to implement a, uh, uh, you know, a policy like that. Um, but we try and, you know, do everything else we possibly can for our clients. Very good. All right. Thank you. The collector, are you, do you get the, uh, the 2019 W cent? Uh, that came with the set, which comes in those little plastic bags. Are you seeing those and getting destroyed or any marks on those? Uh, I, we aren't getting any of those. Okay, very good. Bob Wolf, what constitutional do you sell the most of and what's the hardest for Monument to get a hold of? Uh, honestly, none of it's hard to get a hold of, um, only because you know we have you know wholesale contacts um, all over the country, so we never have a problem with sourcing material. Um, I'd say our most popular are walking with the half dollars. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Silver Fox, do you ever watch unboxing videos and look at your orders to see who YouTubers are? Uh, I, I do watch the unboxing videos when I see them. Um, I don't try and figure out who they are because right. what does it matter? But, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do, we really appreciate any of the positive vibes anyone is sending out there about the company, about, about anything we do. We really appreciate that. And, you know, one other thing about the, um, about, uh, about the customer loyalty program, I appreciate that, uh, that somebody would, would like that and that people enjoy that. You know, that's good too. Um, but to my point about, you know, having a sustainable business, um, there are a lot of companies in this business that go out of business and right. that's not going to be something that we do. So we are going to do something as closely as we can in almost every situation that is sustainable. And you've seen a lot of companies that try things that aren't sustainable. So if we can come up with an option that is sustainable, we'll absolutely do it. If not, we'll skip it. Cool. All right. Uh, Stephen Parsons, do you accept e checks? I think you do, right? E checks. Yeah, and uh, key about that is not only do we accept e check, we accept it uh, even for first time buyers. So you don't have to send us physical check or do you know two or three trades with us to have it enabled. It's there, good to go right away. 
All right, very good. How many people have the keys? Silver bean counter, how many people have the keys to the vault at M Monument Metals? We'd love to hear the order for FEMA process if that isn't asking too much. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, how many people have the keys? We have two people with the keys. Cool. Uh, the, the big keys. Um, uh, order fulfillment process. Well, we take, we take an order, comes into the back end of the website. Uh, the back end of the website is linked up with our shipping software, so that's automatically integrated. It's also automatically integrated with our accounting software, so that goes there. Um, when we, let's say that you send us a physical check or that your e-check clears, we mark that as paid in, in the back of the site, which goes to, ships, uh, goes to our shipping software, and it goes to our accounting software as well. That automatically moves in our shipping software your order from a waiting payment to a waiting shipment, and it has all the details from the order that are directly downloaded from the site. It automatically calculates the shipping cost, and based on the weight, we know exactly what type of package to send it in, and then we print the labels. When we print the labels, an email is sent directly to you, giving you the tracking and the items that you're getting, um, and then those are all taken to the post office or UPS in a, in a batch shipment. Uh, where we have one scanning code that scans all of the packages as accepted. And then right. a few, and usually two or three business days. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. All right. Silver so Surfer, what are your thoughts on the future of U.S. numismatic realm? I think, uh, I think that's been an area that's, that's been a pretty tough go for the past 10 years or so, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, but I think United States numismatics are here to stay. Right. It, far the most popular area in that in the world um a lot of the stuff that i used to do and that some of the jobs excuse me that i had before this one in the industry was dealing with a lot of uh, numismatic coins um i think the I think the most valuable coin i sold was a 1912 i can't remember i think it was ms67 20 dollars saint gaudens for a little over a quarter million dollars something like that wow uh, you know, the money is out there for those coins. The collector market is out there. It's a little bit in hiding. Um, but uh, if you have one-of-a-kind coins, if you have nice coins, there's always a market for them. Very good. All right. Higher media, why is it hard to find one-ounce gold rounds? Wish you sold some. I think, uh, I think the, the whole idea of gold rounds is that when you start getting into privately minted gold, there's a lot more hesitation uh, from the public if it's not in a bar form in an asset card. Right. Um, you know, government minted people have enough faith and trust that, that, that you're getting what you should be. Whereas when it comes to privately minted, privately minted, it seems to be fine with bars and cards like uh, Argor Horaeus or PAMP or Credit Suisse or you know, a variety of other places. But as soon as you get gold round, I think people might be okay with it in a card, but then why don't you just make it a bar right. uh, at that point? Um, so having privately minted gold, the difference in value, I think, turns people off uh, to having privately minted gold in that form. Very good, okay. DD Prepper, will there be another sale on Constitutional Silver? Oh, of course. Yeah, all right. Some Eric C. says, in light of JPM's back crypto stable coin, which I believe will be changed to silver-backed, have you heard of wholesalers such as yourself starting a silver-backed crypto? There's always there's always talk of, you know, blockchain this and blockchain that in this industry. Um, uh, what's the gold credit card? Uh, oh, man. I've uh, Gold. Uh, BitGold. BitGold, I think, was one. It was, it was it was something else. I don't remember what it's called right now. There, you know, a gold back credit card that a lot of people were using. Um, I think there's a niche for those products, um, but you know, I'm kind of in the camp of if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Right, right. All right, guys. I think we're gonna probably uh, some of these some of these questions are kind of repeating some of some of the questions. Uh, so uh, I think we're we're gonna wrap these questions up now. Uh, some people have asked before. So one more. <laughs> One What's more for the road? Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Let me find one that's for somebody new. Uh, let's see here. 
Um, known and high, we've kind of answered that sort of already, but I'll ask it. Are you planning to sell collector coins like World War II coins? I guess the, they have constitutional silver. Uh, but he, any, any, any other um, collector coins you plan on selling? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we, we need to get into more. Um, and we're working on that. So, okay, yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. I think, um, yeah. All right. Here's one more. Native Stacker. The U.S. Mint is making the proof and commemoratives and triple nine fine silver. Will dealers like you be able to order quarters, dimes, and half dollars in rolls? And I don't uh, answer that. Well, answer away. Yeah. That's a solid no. Because those are collector coins. They're only sold in the lenses and the and the silver sets. They will never sell proof quarters or dimes or half dollars and rolls if they're proof. You can buy those in the secondary market. Some people sell them by the roll. You'll pay a pretty penny for them. But uh, that's not going to go to the dealers. The, those are not bullion coins, even if they're triple nine fund silver. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right. So I think we're uh, we're... I think we pretty much wrapped it up. And guys, I'm very, I mean, we're going to stay tuned because we're going to talk about something very important here in just a second. But I do want to thank you guys very much for asking your questions. I apologize yeah, if I'm thank you. A, a little behind in getting some of them, but uh, it was a lot of questions that come through here. But I think we got most all of them in. Um, and if I skipped over some, it's because it was answered in the, in the, in the, in the previous ones. But I really appreciate you guys definitely taking the time out to watch and, and, and ask these questions. Now we're going to answer some other questions that were asked about uh, what Monument Metal's newest uh, initiative is. And John, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of interest in silver rounds and in new material that is interesting. Uh, about six, six to nine months ago, um, we set out to uh, create a silver round series um, that that is something that I've wanted to see for a long time. Um, a lot of times when you look at new silver round series, you have to make a choice. And the choice is, do I want something that's not <laughs> interesting but inexpensive, or do I have to choose something that's very high premium but pretty cool? Um, and I think some of the questions tonight went along those lines. Um, so we set out to create a high premium round that doesn't have high premium. So we wanted a round, uh, a round series that uh, had interesting subject matter, um, very nice detail, and very fine finish on them from a very well-known and quality silver round maker, or mint, I should say, and do it for a price that would be less than our competitors could do it for. And so we spent a lot of time on that, and uh, what we came up with, um, we wanted something that that had something to do with our company. You know, we're Monument Metals. There's a reason we're called Monument Metals. We're based in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, not too close to the Washington, D.C. area, but uh, uh, close enough. And, uh, you know, there I, I've seen other coin series in the past that have done uh, other elements of Washington, D.C., but uh, haven't seen one uh, in a long time um, and not one that we enjoyed the detail on. Not only that, um, I was inspired, you know, one of my first jobs in the business, we bought a lot of material that we called it private mint sterling. They were these sort of stories in silver coins. Um, you know, you'd get a 30 coin set and would say like stories of the Bible or a 30 coin set that said, you know, the history of uh, the American revolution. And it would tell a story in these coins. And we kind of went and saw the story of Washington DC and its monuments in these coins and we want you to do it and wanted to do it in a cost effective way. So what we're introducing today on this show is uh, the uh, landmarks of Washington series. It's an exclusive silver round series starting today from monument metals. I don't know. If, are you showing it now? I can't tell. Yes. yes. It's a, uh, it's a one ounce silver round. It's made by golden state mint who makes very quality, high quality um, silver rounds. Uh, they've, in terms of other things they've done, they've done the Aztec rounds. If you've seen those, they've done some other really high quality, high detail rounds. Um, a lot of times, uh, 
those rounds will cost, you know, two, three dollars an ounce over spot. Um, we're going to be introducing this as low as 79 cents over spot um, for box quantity. And we're going to have a special price for you that I'll get to in just a minute. But uh, we wanted to focus on uh, the U.S. Capitol as the first uh, first edition of this round. Um, by the way, I'm going to pause you just for a moment here. These mm -hmm. renderings are pretty good, but watch my video unboxing this. Yeah. Because the actual round looks better, I think, than these renderings. In my yeah, opinion. and we actually, I was going to say, we kind of we kind of threw those images together last minute. We have some professional images coming. We we wanted to give you guys first look, and uh, and give you these. And I actually have some here. If oh, you want to shoot it, shoot it back to me, I can show you. Yeah, let's see that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah, you were back on you. Okay, okay so um, they're going to come in a tube like this, the cute little monument metal stick. Nice. Like nice. And uh, they're going to look like this. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a look. Yeah. There. Yeah, and if and if you put your hand, if you put your hand behind it and then move it closer to the camera, my camera actually doesn't work right now for some reason. But if you put your hand behind it and move it right up to the camera, it should focus on it. Yeah, let's see. It's still focusing on your face. If you put your hand literally covering up the screen behind it, behind the round, mm -hmm. it should it should uh there you go. Yeah, that's it's starting to come into focus there. Yeah, that that looks pretty. Yeah, there there you go. Yeah, so they've, yeah. They've got a, it's got a mirror finish. It's got beautiful detail on uh, on the Capitol building. And uh, let me show you the back here. The reverse. This now, is our logo. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, some people were a little critical of the of the. That's the reverse, right? Yeah, that's the reverse. That's the reverse. And that's going to be common across the series, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, probably. I mean, we may tweak it a little bit, but yes. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I noticed about the about that design, some people, if you look at the Capitol Dome, even compared to your logo, it's a little off, a little off kilter a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, you know, when you're making a round that has the detail on the detail of a high end round on one side, um, but you want to keep it a little more cost effective. You have to make some sacrifices. Right. So we, we toned down the detail on, uh, on the reverse side on the individual buildings and that, that threw, threw that off a little bit. But um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the round release, um, this is going to be a limited mintage release. Um, we're going to cap it at 50,000. Um, but to be honest with you, I think we'll probably end up making less, maybe right. somewhere in the thirty thousand dollar, thirty thousand dollar, thirty thousand round range. Uh, so we're very excited about this. Um, I'm not sure what the second one will be yet. We haven't decided. Okay. But, uh, we've had a lot of requests for these rounds already, just based on your unboxing video that you did the other day. And uh, these are high quality rounds. The mirror finisher is very pretty. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the detail, especially, you'll see on the obverse. Oh yeah, the, it's incredible. Most people that I've shown them to have liked the most. Right. Um, so if you're looking for a round that is cost effective and interesting, you'll get this. And right. the other thing is, um, usually there's tiered pricing whenever you see any of these rounds. We have tiered pricing on this as well. But uh, from now through the end of the weekend, what we're doing is we're making tube quantities of this or more up until the box uh, the box range, which is 500. If you want a tube or more, you're only paying 99 cents over spot for this round. Nice. Um, That's the price here, right? 1648? 1648 based on current spot is 99 cents. Right. If you check each echo wire price. And that's the uh, special, that's the special for the for the viewer because this is debuting right now. So exactly. Got, so we haven't we haven't sold any of these. Um, none until until right now. So right. if you go in there now, you can get them. Um, this price will be good through Sunday Sunday evening. Um, so sure. grab them while you can. All right. And, uh, you know, as always, you know, we really appreciate uh, this community and if you guys ever have questions or need anything from us, be sure to message us. Yeah. Or you can get it to us. 
Nice. All right. Well, there you have it. And so uh, let me see if I can uh, get this. I'll put this link in the in the in the chat here. Yeah. Let me see if I can get the image any better on my end. Yeah. Let's see here. Your unboxing video was really good. In cool. Terms of what it looked like. All right. So, yeah, all right. So he's gonna show it again here. Yeah. If if you put your hand completely behind it. So that it'll only focus. That's got to be the central focus, and that'll help uh, help bring it into focus. It's almost like, uh, yeah. There you go. Let's see if that focuses from there. That should focus. Let's see here. For some reason it's. I think that's about as good as it'll get. Yeah, that might be about as good as it's going to get it that close. But uh, but yeah, I wish mine worked. I, I could show it on this end, but for some reason my camera's not working right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Very good. Let's see. All right, nice. So there, there they are. That's the new release and the special that they've got going on now through the weekend uh, for a tube of these. Um, and uh, so yeah. Very good, very good. Um, let me get back to there. Um, so, all right. Well, very good. Uh, the link, I think I posted the link above. Here it is again. And uh, I'm going to actually, before I forget, I'm going to actually put it right here on in the description of this video as well. Um, for those of you guys that are interested here, here we go. Let me get it here. So that it's there. There we go. All right. Very good. Um, all right. Let's see here. There's 20 in a tube. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a typical. Then there's 20. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Very good. typical silver round, uh, you know, increments. Yeah. If you want 10, it's the, the 17 uh, silver Wolverine. If you yeah. want 10, it's a 17, 18 each. Uh, right now, that's based off the spot price. Um, Let's see, let me get back to this. Okay. And uh, let's see here. What else? All right, very good. Um, does anybody else? All right, I think we've we've covered everything there, I think. And we've been going on for an hour and a half now. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, run here. And I think almost, we've covered almost as long as last time. Yeah, almost as long as last time. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and guys, I really do uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, a lot of really good questions for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely appreciate you guys. Definitely. I'm sorry for getting behind on some of them, but it's just a lot to go through. I wanted to get as many in as we could. And, uh, but we'll definitely, and it sounds like that you guys really enjoyed this because I think we had like 150 viewers at one time. So, oh, wow. okay. yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll probably have Jonathan back, you know, we'll, and yeah, if we, you know, just let me know in advance. Um, yeah. I'm happy to do it. Anytime. Can you do uh, July the 19th, 2023? Yes. I'm All right. Very yeah, I'm very All right. Very good. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, um, Jonathan, and thank you to all the viewers. I appreciate you all. Um, remember to keep your feet on the stars and keep reaching for the ground, and uh, we will talk to you all later. Have a good night. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.